One very important thing that I notice when working with AI is that even if you give enough context for an AI agent to work on a single task, they still have no idea about your project. So maybe what we're going to see from now on is I do a quick prototype, let the agent ingest all the context, not just from me, but also from the code itself automatically, mm -hmm. build it, throw it away, and if we still have context window, we start from scratch in a clean architecture, a clean domain-driven design, really nicely done, and maybe this result is going to be better on the second try. Let's trigger people, Alex. Are you ready? to trigger the audience? Yes. Let's trigger the audience. Does Scrum even have a role in this future? This is a tough question. Uh, I know a lot of people are putting a lot of effort into becoming uh, good Scrum masters, good agile coaches. And while this is very important when working with humans, we really need to think uh, at refactoring the processes the way, same way you refactor code. Mm -hmm. So when you refactor code, you don't throw away everything. You yes. just look at what's working and try to improve it and to streamline it and simplify it. And this is what we need to do also with Scrum or all, all these agile processes that are built for humans to work in a certain way. Mm -hmm. But now suddenly we have infinite bandwidth, we have different processes, like we said, like different uh, deliverables, checkpoints, where the humans have to review this and it has to be much, much faster than waiting two weeks to have the, uh, the Scrum review where we present the, the output to the stakeholders. Mm -hmm. we, we might need two, three reviews per day in the future. So what would you say are like the key AI Scrum measurements or, or flags we need to kind of like raise at various points? What, 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 what's the equivalent? So what are the core fundamental uh, features of Scrum? It allows you to have uh, certain deliverables in a certain amount of time and to coordinate between teams mm -hmm. and stakeholders this uh, deliverable so that you can verify if you should proceed or you have to change things. And maybe what we can learn from, from Scrum is this, like create AI uh, checkpoints where sort of all of the AIs that worked in parallel the whole night before, they reach the same point, maybe they handshake between each other and they say, okay, now we need a human in the loop. Mm. And uh, afterwards, we can proceed with another batch of parallel agents but not before the agent has validated. So it's almost, human. An, it's almost an AI scrum that then introduces a human at the right time. Yes. Yeah, very interesting. We're going to jump into the second half of our conversation, but first, a quick shout out to AI Native DevCon. Two days of hands-on sessions, deep dives, and honest conversations about what it means to build AI native software. November 18th and 19th in New York, or join virtually from anywhere. Tickets and details at ainativedev.io slash devcon. See you there. Um, let's talk a little bit about the futures. Let's get crystal ball and kind of say, okay, six months time, 12 months time, maybe even longer. What do you expect to see, I guess, both in and around agents or specs? What are the major changes that you foresee in software development uh, in and around those two areas? So we have to look a little bit back to understand where the curve is coming from. Yeah. So uh, Cloud Code was... Uh, released somewhere in March, April. Which is and, insane. And, it's and this is like that. just a few months ago. Yeah. And now we already have a few iterations of it and can run in parallel, can use nested agents. It's so powerful. And if I think that in six months it's going to be even more powerful, given that we're on an exponential curve, it's very hard to predict where we're going to go. But uh, the f what are the fundamentals? The fundamentals are AI agents that are becoming more and more a hub, a central hub that can decide what to do based on the human interaction. Mm -hmm. So uh, I expect them to run completely uh, 24 by 7. Yep. So I don't expect you to have to run Claude and then you give him a task and then you stop it and then you start with a uh, fresh session. Uh, uh, I don't expect you to have to start Claude, uh, give him a task, finish the task, clo uh, close him and start, it, start a new task in another session. I expect to have a persistent agent that runs 24 by 7, mm -hmm. that is your central hub. Mm -hmm. This agent should be your input point 
should keep a context window that uh, has an understanding of what you need to achieve as a human, but then it will use sub-agents mm. to actually solve the tasks. And it should keep the, his own context window as small as possible so that can coordinate. Sort of a team lead of, of agents, basically, mm. that can spawn agents when needed. And this agent can also be proactive. And we saw this uh, recently with some ChatGPT features where you get proactive information every morning that are relevant for you. And I think agents are, can do the same, but better. Because mm. agents can use tools, uh, can call tools, can connect to uh, other sources of information, and can maybe get trained on your own uh, data. And then they can actually actively work on things that you can delegate to him, or he can come to you and say, hey, you should uh, prepare for the birthday of your wife that's coming next month. Uh, I think it's a good moment to start looking at presents or organizing a party.